Hiya, welcome to In the Kitchen with Tabby. So today, we are making what you wanted to see me make. This recipe by far got the most votes yesterday. So we are making the baked feta pasta. It is absolutely delicious. Now the recipe does not call for chicken, but I had some leftover chicken from last night. So I went ahead and threw a little piece of chicken on top today. You can totally eat it vegetarian style though and leave the meat off if you want. I'm super excited. This is one of my favorite Italian recipes and um, I'm excited to make it for you. So let's get cooking. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna show you guys, if you wanna come on over, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be using for our ingredients. Also, I keep my recipe, I know some people use a special little recipe you know, thing here on the counter, but I like to keep it up kinda of high, and that way it keeps my counter space free too. So here's what we've got. The recipe calls for 20 ounces of cherry tomatoes. This is a package of 24 ounce. I just go ahead and use the 24 ounce. I don't worry about those four ounces. A little extra tomato never hurt anybody. So 24 ounces of tomatoes. We've got a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. It's a half a teaspoon of kosher salt or sea salt, um, and then a, a half a teaspoon of your fresh ground pepper. And then you need a chunk of feta. So that's not your crumbled feta. This is like an actual chunk, and this is an eight ounce block of feta cheese. So that's gonna be your first set. That's what's gonna go in your nine by nine pan. This is just a nine by nine KitchenAid pan. I really like it a lot. I use it a lot. You can tell I've got some little marks in it, but it's not scratched, it's just marked. And uh, I really like that pan a lot. It's sturdy and it's great for brownies. And for just two people, it's the perfect size. Now this pasta is gonna make more than enough for probably four people. I think um, the last time I made it, we had four adults eat and we had enough left over that we had another two meals. So probably six adults could eat off of this recipe. Um, okay, so that's the first part. Second part, you're gonna need 10 ounces of your favorite pasta. I've used bow tie before. You can use, uh, pani or, um, oh my goodness, the little tube pastas, rigatoni, I think it's called. Or today I'm gonna to be just using regular spaghetti. So you can do that as well. So just 10 ounces and you'll wanna cook that. And you'll, you'll cook that while your tomatoes are cooking in the oven. Um, to that, when we get it all finished, we're gonna add either two minced garlic cloves. You can mince your own fresh garlic cloves, or you can use about a tablespoon of the minced garlic that's in extra virgin olive oil. You're gonna need just a little dash of red pepper flakes. This is, I know, it, I mean, literally just a dash, and it seems like it's not enough to even do anything. It is optional, but I really like it. I think it adds a really nice little flavor. Um, and then it calls for a quarter cup of fresh basil leaves. So typically what I do is just get this little package of chopped basil and it's lightly dried. So it's not completely fresh, but you can see, if you wanna, you can kind of see that's just not like a dried basil, but it's just lightly dried. And so that's about enough. That, that works perfect for me. It's probably not quite a quarter cup, but it's perfect amount for, for this size. Um, so that's all of the ingredients you're gonna need. It's really pretty simple. And um, so yeah, so we're gonna get started. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. You know, I always say when you're cooking in the kitchen, you should always have clean hands. So I always like to give them a little scrub. I'm gonna be touching those tomatoes and things. And so I always like to make sure that my hands are nice and clean whenever I get started cooking. So we're gonna give that a nice, nice scrub and then we're gonna get started. You guys are gonna be amazed at how easy this is. You're not even gonna believe it. It is one of the simplest recipes you could have picked for me to make. So we're gonna take these tomatoes. They're already ready and, and I rinsed them. So you're just gonna dump them right in your pan. Kind of spread those out a little bit. And if you wanna, if you can see in the pan here, I'm gonna make a little well here in the middle for that's where the feta cheese is gonna go. So I'm gonna take my quarter cup of olive oil you want to, if you can, you want to try to use the extra virgin olive oil. That's just a little higher quality oil and it's just going to add a lot more flavor. So you're going to take that extra virgin olive oil. I didn't need to grease the pan or anything because obviously we're putting all of this olive oil in here. So you're just going to pour that olive oil around on those tomatoes. And sometimes you pour it a little bit out on the edge of the pan, but that's okay. <laughs> just going to wipe that up real quick. All right, then you're gonna take your half a teaspoon of salt. Just sprinkle that around on your tomatoes. And it calls for a half a teaspoon of pepper. I don't usually measure the pepper. I just kind of, like I said before, I measure with my heart. I just kind of let that go a little bit. I love this little pepper grinder. We really, we really like using the fresh ground pepper with those peppercorns. It adds a lot more flavor to the, to the dish. All right, so that's that. 
And then we're gonna take a little spoon here. Just kind of mix those tomatoes and salt and pepper, mix those around in there. You can see all that nice olive oil in the bottom of the pan. All right, make that well back into the center. Of course, with the olive oil, those tomatoes want to kind of slide around in there now. You're going to take your feta cheese. You may need to drain it. This one doesn't have any uh, liquid in the bottom of it, so I don't need to worry about draining it. But you're going to take that feta cheese and you're just going to push it right down into the middle of this bunch of tomatoes, just like that. And that is step one. So that's all there is to it. I've already preheated my oven to 400 degrees. So we're gonna take this pan and we are going to put it here in the oven. And it's gonna stay in there for 30 minutes. Set my timer, 30 minutes. And when that's done, we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. All right guys, so we're ready for the next step. So we've got our water boiling here and I'm going to add to that a couple of pinches of salt, some nice hefty pinches. This is the only time you're gonna be able to salt your pasta. So you wanna make sure you get that salted water, you know, get that water good and salty. Um, and I've always heard you don't typically add the salt until the water's boiling. If that's true, let me know. If it's not, tell me what you think. And then I always add a little bit of oil. When I lived in Brazil, the lady that would come and help us cook and clean and, and all of that, it was very common in Brazil. But um, yeah, when she, when she was teaching me, she taught me a lot actually about cooking and she always told me to put a little oil in your pasta because it keeps it from sticking. So I've always done that. So, okay. So the recipe calls for 10 ounces of pasta. This is a 16 ounce box. So I'm not going to use the whole box. And if you like your pasta whole, you can just put it in, put it in whole. You'd want to use a bigger pot probably. I usually give it a nice little shakedown and then I just break it in half. Here we go. And I usually kind of alternate the direction that I put it in the pan. That looks like that was just a little bit more than half. So I'm gonna go just a little bit more here. All right, so we're gonna drop that in. We've got about 10 minutes left on the tomatoes cooking in the oven, but I wanna get this pasta cooking. I usually wait until there's about 10 minutes left on the tomatoes, 10 or 15, and then I get this pasta cooking. And then by the time the pasta is done, tomatoes should be done and we'll whip the rest of it together. One quick tip I just wanna let you know, I've learned that if you're boiling pasta, you should take a wooden spoon and just lay it right across the top of your pan like this and that will keep it from boiling over. I know it sounds crazy, I have it set on high right now. I'll probably turn it down in just a few minutes, but that actually works. It keeps that, that water from boiling over so you should never have that problem while you're making your pasta. All right, so while that uh, pasta is cooking and the tomatoes are almost done, we still have about seven minutes left, I'm gonna get put together here the, the garlic and the uh, basil and the red pepper flakes. So I just wanted to show you. So I've got my garlic in the bowl here and this little, this little dish, I thought it wasn't a quarter cup, guys. I've never measured it, but I did measure it and look at that. And I did leave just a pinch in the bottom that I can use for some garnish on the plate whenever it's done. So it really was just right at a half, or I'm sorry, right at a quarter of a cup. So we're gonna take that quarter cup of basil and just drop it in there. And then we're gonna take just a pinch and I'll show you literally about that much. Probably not even that much. I'm gonna take some out, about that much. Red pepper flakes. And again, those are optional, but I would encourage you to give it a try because I think it tastes really good. Uh, and I am gonna add just a little bit of olive oil. It doesn't say to do this, but I think it's a little bit dry. So I always like to put just a little bit of olive oil in there. And then you're just gonna kind of give that a little stir, just mix all that up together. And that's gonna be our next step when the tomatoes come out of the oven. So there you go. We'll leave that sit here ready to go. We, like I said, we've got about six and a half minutes and then we will show you the next step. I'll be back. All right guys, pasta is done, tomatoes are done. I'm gonna turn my oven off and I'm gonna pull this out so you can see it. Ooh, that was hot. All right, so there is the tomatoes. So you just wanna make sure that when it is done, and I actually, it says 30 minutes, I actually let this go about 35. You want that feta cheese to get that nice brown kind of caramelized on top. That's gonna to add a little extra flavor. So, and then you can see too, the tomatoes are nice and cooked. So we're gonna take our little spatula here and we're just gonna kind of smash that cheese up and it's all gonna stay right in this pan. We're not mixing it 
or taking it out of this pan. So everything stays in here. So we're just gonna mix that cheese up, get it nice and creamy all throughout those tomatoes. And the pasta, I have it cooked. I'm not going to drain that. And the reason is I'm gonna use my, um, my spaghetti spoon to get it out with. The reason for that is because I wanna retain a little bit of that liquid that's in the bottom of that pan, just in case this is dry. It doesn't look like it's gonna be, but just in case, if it is a little dry, you can use a little bit of that pasta water and it will help moisten it, add moisture, and, and keep it nice and creamy. Doesn't that look delicious though? Oh, I wish you guys could smell it. It smells so good. All right, I'm gonna add my pasta. So you can see, see how that olive oil kept that pasta from sticking together? It's just really nice and loose. So I'm just gonna add that pasta right to the, right to the pan. And sometimes I don't put all of it, especially since this is the first time I'm using spaghetti. I'm probably not gonna use all of it. And you can see a little bit of that juice is coming with it. But I'm gonna start there and kind of see what that, see what that looks like. So we just kind of mix that around in here. One of the reasons I like this, one of the reasons that I like this dish so much is because of the fact that it's all in one pan. Other than your noodle pan, you don't really have any other super, you know, difficult dishes and stuff, a lot of different things that you have to wash and clean up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more pasta because that looks like that needs a little bit more. And I do want to um, give a shout out to my cameraman today. He's helping me today, he's doing a great job. And I appreciate it. Also, the other day, whenever I went to Walmart to pick up the feta cheese and the ingredients that I needed for this, I ran into a new follower. And that was kind of exciting. Her name is Jenna. And she actually helped me um, check out at Walmart. She actually saw me with my cat-like reflexes. I almost dropped the container of tomatoes. It was kind of funny. But she, she saved me. She came over and saved me. Her name is Jenna. And she was really sweet. So... Welcome, Jenna. I'm glad you're following my page, and I hope you find some encouragement and, and uh, learn something new. All right, so how does that look? I think that looks pretty good. So we've got that all stirred in. Now we're gonna take our basil, garlic, and red pepper mixture and just mix that in there. All of that goes in. Just don't wanna leave any of that goodness in the, pan, in the bowl. So we're just gonna stir all of that in. Now you can keep this vegetarian and eat it just like this, just a baked feta pasta. You don't have to add any meat to it at all if you don't want to. We did have some leftover chicken from last night that Dale fried up for us. And so um, just pan fried in some olive oil with a little salt, pepper, and garlic. So no breading or anything. It's just a clean fried chicken. But um, So I am gonna add a little fried chicken to this when I plate it up. Do you want the first bite, Dale, or do you want me to take it? He's saying no, he's gonna let me take it. It's probably too hard to take a bite of this and film at the same time. All right, so that's it. So that is that is the dish. Now, I just do, I do wanna say, I did this in a nine by nine. You can absolutely make this in a nine by 13. You don't have to do a nine by nine. Nine by 13 would work just as easy. You'd have a little more space probably for it, but, um, but yeah, I just did the nine by nine today. So I'm gonna get just a little bit out here so I can taste it for you. Doesn't that look beautiful? Grab a fork. You can see the chunks of feta still in there. So you, you know that that feta is in there and the basil and garlic, tomatoes. You wanna get a little bit of all of that. This is one of my favorite Italians. Dishes. I think being Hungarian, you know, I love ethnic food. I could eat Italian food, Mexican food, Hungarian food every day, and I'd never get tired of it. Guys, sometimes when I make a recipe, I hope you have this experience too, but sometimes when I make a recipe, I think, God, how in the world did I do that? Because <laughs> it is so good. It is so good, you guys. I'm gonna have to give a taste to my to my sweetie here behind the camera. Oh, he likes it. He likes it. All right. 
So guys, that's it. I'm gonna plate it up and I will take a little picture with the chicken on top. Like I said, you can eat it just like this. You don't have to add any chicken to it at all, but since I have that leftover chicken, I'm gonna go ahead and slice some, I've warmed it up. I'm gonna go ahead and slice some chicken on top of it too. And I'll take a picture. Um, and then be looking for a video also, uh, just a short video, a little real video of the uh, bread dipping sauce that I use. So when we do a meal like this, I usually make an oil and balsamic vinegar uh, dip for my bread and I'll chunk that bread up and we'll have that bread with the with the dipping oil and it's really good too. So I'll make a little video for that and we will post that a little bit later as well. Um, and in that video, there's gonna be a little shout out to one of our followers that made one of my recipes and posted a picture. So be looking for that at the end of the video too. I appreciate you guys so much. I love you. Um, remember, Christ is the unseen guest at every single dinner table and he is the silent listener at every conversation. So just make sure your words are uplifting and that you're loving on people and um, shining a light. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.